Today's episode of Variant is brought to you by Carbonite. Today on Variant, I give you guys the history of all the Green Lanterns of Earth. Welcome to Variant. We love comics more than I love getting packages in the mail. I'm your host, Aris Quinones. Now, you guys have requested lots of characters for me to do history of episodes for, some of the most popular requests being Deathstroke, Harley Quinn, Hellboy, and so on. And I will get to all those and more in time, but today it's all about the Green Lanterns of Earth, so let's talk about the Emerald Knights. Now I know there are thousands of Green Lanterns since the Green Lanterns Corps is basically just an intergalactic police so there are a crap ton of them but as I said I'm going to be focusing on the six Green Lanterns of Earth starting with the first one ever Alan Scott. Alan Scott is the original Golden Age Green Lantern and a founding member of the Justice Society of America. He made his first appearance in All American Comics issue 16 in July of 1940. Thousands of years ago a mystical green flame fell to Earth in ancient China as a meteor. A voice in the flame predicted that it would act three times once to bring death Death wants to bring life and wants to bring power. For the first prophecy, a lamp maker crafted the green metal of the meteor into a lamp. In fear and as punishment for what they thought to be sacrilege, the local villagers killed him only to be destroyed by a sudden burst of green flame. For the second, in modern times, the lamp came into the hands of a patient at Arkham Asylum who fashioned the lamp into a railroad lantern. The green flame restored him to sanity and gave him a new life. For the third and final act, the lantern fell into the hands of Alan Scott, a young railroad engineer. Following a railroad bridge collapse, the flame instructs Scott in how to fashion the ring from its metal. To give him fantastic powers as the superhero Green Lantern, he adopts a colorful costume of red, purple, green, and yellow, setting himself apart from his successors, who wear the standard green. Being a crime fighter, he would soon discover his power's weakness to wood. I know, don't ask, it was the 40s. Most recently, however, Alan Scott is the Green Lantern of Earth 2 in DC's New 52, and has been revealed as gay. Moving along, we have the most well-known and my favorite Green Lantern, Hal Jordan. The Green Lantern character was recreated for the Silver Age of comics in the form of Hal Jordan and was first introduced in Showcase 22 in October of 1959. While testing a flight simulator, an energy field surrounded him and took him to Abensor, a member of the Green Lantern Corps who patrolled Sector 2814. While dying, Abensor with his power ring sought out the most worthy successor on Earth. The ring actually found two Earthlings, Hal Jordan and Guy Gardner, who I'll touch on in a bit. Hal happened to be closer to the crash site, however, so he was the one chosen. Despite having some character flaws, Hal Jordan was given the power ring and its power battery. He journeyed to the planet Oa, homeworld of the Green Lantern Corps, and the Guardians of the Universe, who are a race of immensely powerful immortals living on Oa, which is the planet that's at the center of the universe. They also founded and run the Green Lantern Corps. While Hal Jordan was there, he trained with Sinestro, a Corps member that would later become one of Hal's deadliest enemies. Hal became the Green Lantern of Sector 2814, which is the location of Earth, and formed many relationships amongst the superhero community, and became a founding member of the Justice League. Hal is considered the greatest Green Lantern of them all, and is currently the leader of the Green Lantern Corps. Moving along, we have Guy Gardner, as I said I would get to, and I don't lie. Guy Gardner first appeared in Green Lantern Volume 2, Issue 59, in March of 1968. As I said a minute ago, when Abensor crash landed on Earth, his ring found two people worthy of the ring, Hal Jordan and Guy Gardner. Guy Gardner was actually the better choice, but Hal was closer to Abensor, so the ring chose him. However, Guy was chosen to be Hal's backup in case anything ever happened to him. But in DC's New 52, it was changed and he earned his Green Lantern ring after coming to the rescue of his older brother, who had become pinned down during a police shootout with the street gang. Guy has also recently deserted the Green Lantern power ring in favor of the Red Ring of Rage. The next Green Lantern from Earth is another very popular Green Lantern, mostly due to him being the Green Lantern in the Justice League cartoon, and that would be Jon Stewart. We first see him in Green Lantern Volume 2, Issue 87. Jon Stewart is an architect and a veteran U.S. Marine from Detroit, Michigan, who was selected by the Guardians as Hal Jordan's backup after Guy Gardner was seriously injured after getting hit by a car trying to save a civilian. Although Jordan objected to making Stewart a lantern after seeing he had an attitude towards authority figures, the Guardians stood by their selection and chastised Jordan for his bad outlook on the issue. Jordan explained that he just felt that even though Stewart might have the integrity for the task, he obviously would have a chip on his shoulder. John Stewart's distinguished service in the Corps has resulted in a place among the Owen Honor Guard and the position of Chief Trainer for the New Lantern recruits. Moving right along, we have my second favorite Green Lantern, Kyle Rayner. He first appeared in Green Lantern Volume 3, Issue 48, in January of 1994. Kyle Rayner was a struggling but gifted freelance graphic artist. 
Kyle first witnessed a green shooting star moving upwards in the night sky while on a nighttime beach date with his on off again photographer girlfriend. The shooting star was actually famed Green Lantern Hal Jordan, who had been driven insane by the destruction of Coast City and went on a murderous rampage, destroying the power battery, the Guardians of the Universe, and the Green Lantern Corps. Only one guardian named Ganthet survived Jordan's rampage, reforging Jordan's discarded power ring as the Corps' final legacy. Later, Ganthet traveled to Earth, appearing in an alleyway outside a nightclub and encountered two humans. One was a drunken homeless man and the other was Kyle Rayner, who was getting some fresh air and spotted the same green falling star as before, this time falling to Earth. It was Ganthet. Ganthet, before disappearing, put the final ring into Kyle's hands, saying, you will have to do. Kyle then found himself dressed in the standard Green Lantern uniform. Originally thought to be chosen by chance, Ganthet actually chose Kyle Rayner because he had the ability to harness the powers of the emotional spectrum. Once the torchbearer of the Green Lantern Corps, Kyle since has graduated to the role Ganthet had originally attended for him, becoming a White Lantern. And for the final Green Lantern of Earth, we have Simon Baz. Simon Baz made his first appearance in Green Lantern issue zero. Baz was an automotive engineer from Dearborn, Michigan. After losing his job in Detroit's fluctuating automotive industry, he began stealing cars to help assist with his finances. One night after stealing a vehicle, he discovered that there was an explosive planted in the back of it. Due to his ethnic and religious background, he was persecuted for terrorism after narrowly escaping the car explosion. Meanwhile, Hal Jordan and Sinistro's malfunctioning power rings presumed them both dead during their altercation with Black Hand. So the two defective rings fused together and immediately sought out Earth's replacement lantern, Simon Baz. Baz soon after became a founding member of the Justice League of America, a team originally put together to stop the Justice League if they were ever to get out of line or turn evil. Now, I couldn't do a History of Green Lantern episode without at least telling you guys what their oath is since all Lantern Corps have their own oaths. But the Green Lanterns is as follows. In brightest day and blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware my power Green Lantern's light. Just feels so cool and heroic saying that it never gets old. Well, now that I've given you guys a brief overview of all the Green Lanterns from Earth, there's only one thing left for me to do, and that's give you guys some good Green Lantern reading recommendations. You have Blackest Night, Brightest Day, Green Lantern Rebirth, The Sinistro Core Wars, Green Lantern Emerald Twilight and New Dawn, Green Lantern Mosaic, Green Lantern Volume 1 Sinestro, Green Lantern Volume 2 The Revenge of Black Hand, and Green Lantern Volume 3 The End. Those are just a few of some of the great Green Lantern reads. Carbonet protects your pictures and your other computer files from crash, fire, theft, or when you accidentally delete a file. By automatically and continually backing up your files and keeping them securely off-site, you'll never have to remember to back up again. Whether you have one or two computers at home or several computers at your small business, Carbonite is the better backup plan. Over one million customers trust Carbonite to protect their home and small business computer files with plans just starting at $59 a year. Start your free trial at Carbonite.com with the offer code variant and you'll get two bonus months if you decide to buy. That's Carbonite.com. The offer code for two bonus months is very variant. First up for Wednesday, January 8th, we have Avengers World Issue 1. Earth's Mightiest Heroes has returned from the stars, but on the world they left behind, new threats have emerged. Now we have Five Ghosts Issue 8. It's Lost Coastlines Part 2. Fabian decides to aid his old flame, the rogue Jezebel, on a journey across the sea to the Island of Dreams. Next we have Batman Superman Issue 7. Batman vs Superman trapped by the Toy Master in Mongo. Our heroes turn on each other. Who will save Batman and Superman if they can't save themselves? Here we have Green Lantern issue 27. Has Hal dealt a major blow to the crime in Sector 0563, or has he invited the enemy to his door? And finally, we have Detective Comics issue 27. Don't miss this mega-sized issue that celebrates the first appearance of Batman since his first appearance in 1939's Detective Comics issue 27. This issue features new stories by writers like Scott Snyder, Paul Dini, and Greg Hurwitz, and art by Sean Murphy, Neil Adams, and legendary Batman writer and artist Frank Miller. Well, that brings another episode of Variant to a close, but remember, you can always like like our variant Facebook page to keep up with the show and all things comic related. You can also follow me on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash Aris underscore Quinones, and I'll chat comics with you guys because that's what I love to do. But that's it, and I'll see you guys next week when I talk about all things comics. No problem, Johnny. <laughs> Johnny, be quick. Johnny, be cool. No problem, Johnny. I got it, Johnny. Let's do this. Hey, Billy, come check this out. What is it, Johnny? <laughs> it's my 40s New York impressions. To harness the powers of the emotional spection. Spection? 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 Don't ask.